So today what we're doing is kind of based on last time. Um, Scott's going to show us an image and your challenge is to do a little sketch of what you think happened either right before it or right after it. And I'm going to show you an example just to see what we're talking about. But if you think of um, a lot of the gags that Chuck Jones did involved um, setting up something. And so you think lo like logically something's going to happen and then the opposite happens, right? So um, if you think of like the Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons are really good at this, you'd have like a big boulder that was going to be launched on um, on a device or something. And instead of going forwards, it goes like straight up and like smashes the coyote and stuff like that. So we're going to do a little of that, thinking about um, what we can get off of looking at specific images, what would happen right after that, or if you can't think of happen right after, you could draw what happened right before, right? So how we got to that that moment. And I'm not going to do like finish complete sketches. It's going to be more of the loose sketching that we did last week with the thumbnail sketches, right? So it doesn't have to look perfect. We're more looking for ideas um, for, for situations and stuff like that. So Naylene, I, I guess I should have asked you this earlier. Do you want me to keep these images spotlighted for everyone then? And then yeah, I just so everybody can see it. Okay, and then I'll go to yours after when you know when time's ready, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so you don't need to be like watching me draw because we're all gonna draw different stuff because people are gonna have different ideas. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, cat! I saw cat just come in. Your, your so video I... froze up about a minute ago, but it's oh, it, it looks oh. fine now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, bear with me. Hopefully. Zoom has been acting weird in my apartment lately. Um, I had a stretch of a couple weeks where it, it went really, really well. And then lately it'll be, it'll freeze up from time to time. So uh, I'll let you know if there's any issues. Okay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, the first example. So, uh, Scott, can you show the first image? Okay. So here we have Bugs Bunny dressed as a knight with like a baseball bat or a club. And then another knight on the other side with like a baseball bat or a club. So what I would do is um, the challenge is to draw either what happened right before this or to draw what happened right after this. And I'm just, uh, Scott, can you see what my um, sketchbook right now? Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just about. So what I would do is, first of all, what can we think of that could, let's just go with right after. What, what can we think of that would have happened right after that shot of Bugs with the baseball bat and then the other night with the baseball bat? Any, any idea? Um, I do. I, I think I have an idea. Um, Cause I actually saw the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, do you remember what happens? Uh, no, but um, what I assume is that the night misses and, and like, then it hits the ground and then the, then the bat starts vibrating and then it like whacks them in the face a bunch of times. That's a good one. So yeah, one might think that either bugs or the night, I'm just gonna draw the night's nose would get hit yeah. but maybe i'm just gonna draw this little like doodle because remember we're doing thumbnail sketches we aren't doing like finished sketches so maybe this is his hand right and his big arms like oliver said the bat could hit the ground and then maybe like bugs jumped up to avoid it right and then here's Bugs's pear body and his feet, and maybe he jumps up like that. You know, and then maybe he has the bat like over here, like he's gonna hit this knight on the head, right? Yeah, 
Can anybody think of a different thing that could happen? That was a really good ex good example, good thought. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Just so you can see the, the quality of my drawing, right? It's very scribbly. I'm not drawing faces or anything like that. I'm just gonna try to show where things are and what's happening. Maybe get some action lines down there. So you could do like maybe one of them gets hit, this one hits the ground. Um, Scott, why don't you show what actually happens in the cartoon? So that's what actually happens. So, so I don't know quite what that tool is. That's some sort of like a, a power tool or something like that, or like a rivet thing. Uh, but that's what actually happens in the cartoon, right? So, it, so we had bats and then power tool, right? So it could be kind of random, right? But we're trying to think of actions and reactions, right? Well, yeah, but maybe if we had enough time, we could have seen what led up and, and how it ended after. Right, right. So the goal isn't really to guess what happened in the cartoon. We're going to think of different things, probably, than the cartoon. We might think of the same ones because some of these are really famous um, gags and some of them aren't. Um, so it's not about guessing what happened in the cartoon. We're trying to kind of develop our own sense of like, oh, what could happen next with these characters? Or how did we get here? You know, that's another option, too. So if you can't think about what could happen next, um, you can think about what happened right before. How did we get to this moment, right? Um, so the next image we're going to show, um, I'm going to give about five minutes for everybody to draw their own version about what happens either right before or right after um, that shot. Does anybody have any questions on what we're doing? No questions? Cool. So Scott, you got the image. So we have the coyote with a giant magnet. So what could happen after the coyote holds up that huge magnet? So I'm gonna draw a little doodle version of the coyote. His legs. I'm going to try to make them look kind of in the same pose. And he's holding up a huge magnet. Um, can I show you my rough of the, what I think what happened? Um, we're going to give a couple more minutes for everybody to draw, and then we'll go through and share um, what we came up with. Mine's just, just a very simple doodle, but I can show, I can show like an actual wire. Yeah, hold on to that, and then when time is up, This is my road runner. Oh, you drew a road runner? Yeah. Nice. That looks exactly like the road runner. Thanks. Let's do.
I'm trying to draw really fast because I only want to go for another couple of minutes and then we'll open it up. Okay, who needs more time to sketch? Go ahead and raise your hand. Avery, you're done? Excellent, so we're gonna go ahead and open up what you guys came up with. Mine got away from me all the way over on the other page of my sketchbook here, but I was thinking maybe it's a bus that gets attracted to the magnet. Um. So I think that, um that Wile E. Coyote put little steel pellets in the Roadrunner's bird seed. Then he grabs a giant magnet to try and attract them to it. But what actually happens is that the magnet comes to the Roadrunner and not to Wile E. Coyote. Cool, did you try to sketch that out? Um, yeah, it's just a really bad sketch. So. That's okay. It's a little hard to see because of lighting, but I like we want um, sketches like that that are like small and quick. That's kind of what we're what we're looking for for this one. All right. But um, I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty sure it's like. That. Oh, that that's what's in the cartoon. Yeah, I'm. Just yeah, we'll, we'll show you what happened in the cartoon in just a second. All right, Kat, did you have one that you wanted to share? Um. So this is mine. It's like the that was the one from before, but this is like. The ma it brings a big rock and then the magnet flies up and Wiley Coyote is smooshed. Oh, nice. So so he gets smashed against like a, a wall or a big rock, a canyon wall. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't even think of that. Maybe he could get like pushed back. That's a good gag mm -hmm. too. I'm, I'm pretty sure the gag is from 1952's Going Going Gosh or Look Stop in Hasten. Um, I don't, which, um, Scott, does it have down which cartoon this one's from? Uh, this I'm is from right Zipping down. Along. Zipping Along, okay. This one's called Zipping Along. All right, did anybody else have a thumbnail sketch that they wanted to share? Or just what, do, what did they think happens um, after this magnet? Okay, Scott, do you want to reveal what the next uh, screenshot is? There you go, TNT. So the I remember that now. I remember TNT. that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that now. I was, I was thinking, I was thinking the one with the railroad tracks. Yeah, it's easy to get the Roadrunner and Coyote ones mixed up. Like, I'm pretty sure I don't remember any of the names. Just because the a lot of the gags are very um, independent of one another, it's like this gag, this gag, this gag. Um, so there are a couple gags where like it's based on something that happened earlier in the cartoon, but most of them are pretty independent. So I make I get them mixed up all the time. All right, so hopefully that gives you a taste of kind of what the the exercise is. Um, Scott, can we get the next image? Okay, so we have the coyote on a rope bridge with a giant knife that he just cut through the rope bridge with. So what do you think happens after he cut through the rope bridge? Or what do you think happened before? And if you know, let's wait until five minutes are up so people have a chance to get their ideas out and then we'll share. Well, can I just say what I think? Wait, can you wait five minutes? So I don't want to give it away. I'm doing my little doodle. 
of the coyote with his knife. After the coyote kills the roadrunner, how's he planning to get him? He keeps trying to do things like drop it off a cliff or explode it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, ostensibly, he wants to eat the roadrunner, right? But if he blows up the roadrunner into, like, a million pieces, like, how is he going to get dinner off of that? All right, mine's going to be kind of weird. Yeah, usually you don't hunt birds with cannons. <laughs> you can't eat them if they've exploded. Thanks. All right, does anybody need more time with their sketches? Speak now. Do you more time? No? OK. OK. So I thought, mine's kind of weird. <laughs> I thought maybe the bridge is an animated bridge and it will rear back and go, how rude, <laughs> to the coyote. It felt weird. All right, who wants to share what they came up with next? We have oh, Kat. Oh, can I? I think we're going to go Kat and then we can go to Oliver, okay? Okay. Um, so mine is... A little weird too, and as a coincidence, it also has to do with an animated bridge. Is um, <laughs> what if the bridge is an animated bridge and it pushes the wily coyote down? Uh, or it could like catch him and then drag it down, yeah. drag him down as it falls. Yeah. Could be that. Yeah. And it just kind of hangs in the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought the same thing that it would just move on its own. All right, um, Oliver, um, what did you have? So I think when he cuts the bridge, the land falls instead can you move of the, the bridge. Can you move the page a little bit closer? There we go. Just so we can see. I think see the it. land falls instead so of the bridge. So you think instead of the bridge falls, the land will fall? I think it's I think it's from look stop and hasten, or going going gosh, because I know it's not from Fast and Furious. Yeah, let me see if I have Scott. Do you know what this is from? Uh, yes, this is also from Zipping Along. This is also from Zipping Along, okay. Did anybody else want to share, want to make a guess or share what they think could happen after this? All right, Scott, why don't you reveal the next slide? There he is. So the ground falls out and you can still see the coyote's head right before it falls. And the bridge stays exactly where it is. In the exact same place. All right, can we get the next one? Coyote ones. Okay, so he has on wings, uh, some sort of device that is propelled by the rocket. This one's probably pretty easy to guess what could happen next, but we'll see what you can come up with. Oh, I'm gonna have to draw a different pose for mine. Let me see. Sometimes I'll try to draw my thumbnails with um, the box. And then sometimes I'll just draw the pose first because I know what I want the pose to be.
Yeah, let's make the size bigger. Okay. Just kind of put in some ground here. So this ended up being pretty big for a thumbnail sketch for me, but that's okay. So we're just kind of making stuff up as we go along. Okay. Um, is everybody done with their sketches who needs more time you're done Avery awesome all right so what I thought of for mine um, would be that the rocket takes off and just takes that whole suit with it and doesn't take the coyote anywhere right so you have this whole run up and down the coyote's back that's on fire and the costumes like floating up here somewhere and then the rocket is uh, already propelled away from the coyote. So that was my thought. Uh, who wants to share what they think is going to happen after this? So, um, one, I was thinking that, but then two, I was thinking that maybe um, the the um, the rocket explodes or something like that. Yeah, maybe the rocket just explodes. It just maybe blows they up. Or maybe they both fly and then they crash into a cliff, or only the coyote goes and then he falls like down. Just yeah, instead of getting down. shot up, he just falls straight down. Yeah. Um, uh, Kat, I see your hands up. What did you think for this one? Um, so mine's just mostly a bunch of lines and hard to define, but basically the rocket just blows everything to pieces and just Wiley e. Coyote's arms start flapping without the rest of his body. Okay, okay. I can still see the costume and everything. So even in the, yeah. the messiness of the sketch, you can still kind of see what's going on. That's awesome. All right, did anybody else want to share what they had? So Tater in the chat had a, a little bit of a twist on it too. Uh, he says, I like the idea of the rocket not being securely attached so it just shoots over his back and he just floats down like a piece of paper to the bottom of the canyon. So it did a different kind of fall where it's just like, like that. All right, any other thoughts? Does anyone else wanna take a guess? Okay, Scott, why don't you reveal the next page? There he is. That's what happens. <laughs> the whole thing explodes and gets burnt up. Um, question. Is that from, yep. um, um, I, um, um, just by looking at the style, I kind of assume it's either late 50s or the Bugs Bunny show. Um, this would have been the ones from the 50s. I don't know what Bugs Bunny show you're referring to, but a lot of, like, the Bugs Bunny and Tweety shows were recycled from the 50s. They weren't necessarily new materials, so it could be both. <laughs> it could be both. Yeah, it's just the, the style looks like a very late Mark Selzer style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure who did um, the layout on this one. This is Scott? from Deep Prepared. Be pre um, be prepared. Uh, 1961, so yeah, okay. pretty close to the 50s. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but that wasn't that also like Lily. I don't care. We we just lost your visual. There we go. Uh, it's because it's because my um 
my sister's friend always calls at this time, and like, I was worried that would happen. Oh, if your sister's friend calls and it knocks you off. Oh, I'm have back. Some charcoal from a previous project that is starting to contaminate my sketchbook. That's okay. All right. All right. So. Scott, do we, can we get the next one? Oh, there we go. All right, so this is the coyote in a bowstring, and his nose is an arrow head. So what could happen from this point? I see Oliver's hand up, but you want to wait, right, until the five minutes are up? Yeah, for any, like, guesses or reveals. So, no spoilers. So, just yeah, yet. yeah, no, yeah. We'll give, we'll give away the guesses at the end there. Ooh, maybe it has a different trajectory. Okay, so I had a different idea. So when I do these, I usually don't try to think of specific ideas right before class. I try to see what I can come up with in five minutes, just like you guys. So sometimes I think of different ideas. Actually, it's more like this. So. Sometimes if I draw hands, I'll just draw like the, the fingers as little lines. And there's his tail. and try to make it look like the coyote. Okay, go ahead and raise your hand if you need more time on this one. All right, Kat, you need more time? No, that was an accident. Oh, that was an accident, okay, cool. I know, right? We had a comment. He's not losing his balance with his bow standing up like that. That's, yeah, I have no idea how that works. Hello, Daniela. Welcome. I just saw you come in. Okay, so for mine, what I thought, since he's turned it around this way, that he might lose control of the bowstring and just get planted in the ground with his nose first like that. So that was my, my sketch for what might happen. Uh, so we have Cat. See, I didn't see what order people came in. I, I um, so this is mine. The instead of wildly flying off, the bow does basically. Ah, okay. So the bow, the bow flies backwards, and he's just like hanging there in the air. That was that's also my guess. Oh, that's also your guess, Oliver. Yeah. Oh, how weird! You both came up with the same thing. Did you try to draw it? No, but because I am 100% determined that's what happens, because I have seen the cartoon with that gag in it. Do so you think that's what happened with it, the episode? All right, well, yes. we'll see you in a minute. We also have Liliana and Heather Rose with their hands up. Um, I was going to say that 
he shoots off, but then the Roadrunner dodges, so he just keeps flying. Oh, so you just miss the Roadrunner and keeps flying? That's another possibility. Yeah. That's another possibility. Does anyone else have any guesses on what happens right after this? Okay, um, Scott, I think it's time to reveal what happens right after this moment with the arrow. Boom. <laughs> so I believe that's a cactus. He just goes straight through uh, a cactus in that one. Okay, um, do we have one more, Scott? Yes, this last one here. Oh, perfect. All right. So this one, I couldn't find an image for what happens after it. I think we could all guess what happens after it. So if you want to uh, think of what happens um, before, that is an option too. But just like before, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity. You can draw either what happens directly after this. He's got like a human-shaped uh, dynamite uh, doll. Um, you can either write what happens directly before this or directly after this. So I'm going to draw my sketchbook. I'm actually going to draw what I think would happen before this, because I think that would be fun. Let me get my skinny coyote body in here. This is going to be his hands. I'm trying to draw fast, so. Ooh, someone, let me go real quick to the chat. All right, so if you haven't seen the, ta the chat, Tater wrote out what he thinks will happen. So it says, TNT child becomes sentient, starts wreaking havoc, and then begins their reign of terror. I like to think that before this, it was a Powerpuff Girls type situation, like, Ah, yes, he added metal, plastic, and clay, but oh no, he accidentally added gunpowder. But it's fine because sentient bombs are totally safe. So there's one thought. I like um, calling it a TNT child. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm pretty sure um, it explodes him, but, um, but I'm also um, pretty sure that... Um, this is a cartoon where he goes up against Bugs Bunny specifically because the because Wile E. Coyote never has his mouth open. Well, he does, but only like only like in certain situations. Yeah, that's a that's a good thing to bring it up. So when um, the coyote is hunting the Roadrunner, no one talks, right? We all know this. Um, some people don't know that Coyote has a few cartoons with Bugs Bunny where he does talk. Um, so in this image, his mouth is kind of open like he's talking. It's probably a safe get guess that this is one with Bugs Bunny. Um, yeah, the, the only talking in Roadrunner cartoons is... Yeah, yeah, that's the, the, only, the only speech. 
Um, so we'll go through, um, is there anybody else that wants to draw what they think happened either before or after the shot? All right, Kat? Um, so what I drew was after, and it explodes him. But also the bowling ball head flies onto his head, and it's an awful pad. <laughs> so the the head of the the doll or the puppet will will smash into his head. That's a pretty pretty safe yeah, guess yeah. that it explodes. <laughs> All right. Any other guesses? All right. Um. So Scott, you found the clip of this happening. Yes, I, I took some time while you were drawing and I found the clip. Oh, perfect. Can you, can you um, share it with us? Sure. I don't think there's audio, but here's the, okay. the video. So it is a Bugs Bunny one. So you try to vacuum up Bugs Bunny and it's a TNT baby. <laughs> That was a lot of explosions. <laughs> so you're right in that it does explode, but the cartoon doesn't show you the explosion from inside the coyote's like cave there. It shows you outside. So that's kind of cool. All right, so we have about um, 15 minutes left. Does anybody want to share anything else that they've been working on, even if it isn't like Looney Tunes stuff? Um, so I saw Heather Rose first. Um, uh, I was just working on having fun with numbers. Ooh, cool. So it's like a different way to write um, bubble letters. That's really different. That's cool. That's awesome. All right. Uh, and then we had Oliver next. Okay, so, um, I draw all the time, and so, like, so what I do is, like, I draw sea creatures. Oh, nice octopus. I love octopus. That's awesome. And then, I also, I, I'm also fond of drawing Fleischer Studios characters. All right, so you got Coco the Clown. And then, you know, it's like, I, I, I draw a wide variety of fish, I cuttlefish, a little more, there squid, we go. Uh, rockweed gunnels, ocean sunfish, you know, then I have a sea star, then I have my deep sea diver, and, and then I have my, um, my hammerhead, my seahorse, and one of my favorites, my nurse shark. Nice. Have you been to any aquariums? Um, yes. And yeah? What inspired me to draw sea creatures is an old 1939 Tex Avery cartoon called Fresh Fish. Okay. What happens in that? You don't have to give us everything that happened in that cartoon, but like so general it's what sort happens. of like a documentary film about fish, but uh -huh. it's like a cartoon. Okay. So it's like the so it's like, it's a lot of jokes and just stuff like that. But my favorite joke is when they're in the shark waters. And um, cause that's just the funniest part because like um, the tiger shark, like it's like, it actually looks like a tiger. And then the hammerhead shark is just the shark holding a hammer and bonking it on its head. And then there's um, the shovel nose shark, which actually had the shovel for a nose and it says WPA project. So there's a bunch of puns with, with various yeah. fish and shark and stuff. Yeah. That's really cool. It's nice to have a thing what you're into. That's awesome. Thanks, Oliver, for sharing all of that with us. Did anybody else have anything they've been working on that they wanted to share? Someone's outside. We are going to wrap it up for today. Thank you for coming to Sketchbook Summer. We are going to continue. Um, I'm going to continue on Mondays for next month doing different um, sketchbook stuff, uh, trying to fill up 
my sketchbook by the end of the summer. So if you want to join me on that, uh, we are continuing throughout August and then um, we will have that up. It's not up on the website yet the rest of August, but we will have that up soon. Um, if you would like to donate, uh, most of you already know we are completely running on donations right now. So we want to keep this going for free for everybody. Um, so Scott has just posted the donation link in the chat if you this is part of your life throughout the summer and throughout the year. And if you would like to keep this going, um, consider donating. Um, we also do private lessons if you would like. Um, and then also all of our classes are up on YouTube. So if you missed any um, or want to go back and kind of see more um, classes, um, we are also on YouTube as uh, Chuck Jones in your homes as well. Um, and then I think that is it for this week. There we go. I will see the rest of you uh, on Monday. Thanks, Scott, for helping me with all of the images and for finding Absolutely. that clip for us. That was that awesome. That was fun. Yeah, it was a quick, quick, quick Googling. <laughs> all, right, the rest. all right, everybody. Hope you had fun. Have a great week. I'll see you next Monday. Thanks, Nadine. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.